joining us now, Vincent Venuccio, State Policy Network. Here's a man who vigorously uh, supported the Janus decision and is very happy about the Supreme Court decision which had just been handed down. Uh, Vincent, I'm looking at a headline here from the Washington Post and it says, a major blow to organized labor. I take it you would agree with that? No, Stuart, actually not at all. It's a major blow for forced Judaism and compelled speech, but it is a great day for the First Amendment and for public employees in the 22 non-right-to-work states where unions can actually get workers fired for not paying them. Um, so you're happy with this? Um, what does it mean for Mark Janus? Does he, uh, he doesn't have to pay anything, I guess. Uh, what about other workers? That's right. So public employees across the country now will have the choice of whether or not to pay a government union. Those government unions can no longer force them to pay as a condition of employment. Now, Vincent, it, uh, real fast, it, as I recall, in Wisconsin, um, Governor Scott Walker made this kind of change for government workers in uh, it, working for the government in Wisconsin. He said, you don't have to pay those union dues. And a lot of government workers promptly quit paying union dues, especially teachers. Is that what happened? And do you expect that to happen elsewhere? Well, Wisconsin was actually a lot different. What Governor Walker did is, besides saying that the employees didn't have to pay, he also passed union recertification so workers could have a vote on what union represents them at the workplace. But besides all of that, he also said that unions could basically bargain over next to nothing, essentially wages and even limited that to inflation. So all this is doing is saying that workers have a choice, or excuse me, public employees have a choice over whether or not to pay that union, and the government union can't get them fired for not paying them. It seems to imply that uh, states which are not currently right to work will become right to work. No closed shop. Is that part of the ruling? Uh, that was actually the heart of the case. Now, once again, we're talking about public employees only. But, yeah, the Mark Janus and uh, his attorneys uh, from Liberty Justice Center National Right to Work, their main argument, which uh, seems like the justices agreed with, was that everything government unions do is political. Right. And because it's political, you can't force public employees to pay them. And once again, I just glanced at the case, but it looks like it's actually even bigger than that. One of the interesting things in the decision is that employees must now opt in to paying a union, not be forced to opt out uh, after uh, they want to get their dues back. So it's not just the end of closed shop. It's not just forcing public employees to pay. Now it's also that unions have to go and get that affirmative consent. So this is actually even bigger than simply right to work. So yeah. what is it? Unions yeah. now have to have, you as a, as a worker, you have to say, I want into this union. Right. Yes. That's correct. You've got to That's opt right. in. And he makes an important point. What this decision says is that everything a union does is inherently political because government unions, right. workers, affect public spending. They can weigh in on the government pension investments. So it wasn't just a political slot right. of it. Right. It was everything. This SCOTUS ruling says everything a government union does is political because the government worker affects taxpayers across the board. This is much more broad-based broad yes. than right. I thought. Oh, yes. It's far more far-reaching than I thought. I thought it was just you can't force somebody to support this political cause. No. No, it's right. much more than that. And we it's, know that... Go ahead. No, it's the, two other things. It's the end of the closed shop. Right. Yeah. And number two, you've got to... You, the, the worker, you have to say, I want into this union. Yeah. You've and, got yeah, to that was in. in right. In the, and that was the big surprise. Uh, most observers of the court were thinking that the court would side with Mark Janus, that they would say that, yes, everything a government union does is inherently political. But the fact that they're now even going further and saying you have to opt in to pay that union and you don't have to affirmatively jump through all these hoops to opt out, that is a really big deal. Mark, uh, Vincent, I got it. That would be a catastrophe for the unions. When this happened in Wisconsin, an awful lot of union people just walked away from paying dues right. and being union members. I mean, this is a catastrophe. It is. The National yes. uh, Education Association, the biggest lobby for teachers, already is forecasting they will lose, watch for this, more than 300,000 members. They've already, over a two-year period, they've already slashed their budget by $50 million over a two year period. This will change the, the political landscape across the board because we have seen, and I've personally seen, government union workers by the busload being bussed in to protest policies they don't 
don't like. Even during their work day, they have been doing that. Again, this will change politically the landscape, potentially, in California, New York, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Ohio, where that, that is not right to work. Today. And in that opinion, and to follow up what Lizzie was saying, that the court said that a union's contract negotiations over pay and benefits were inextricably linked with its broader right. political activities. Right. And that is the crux right Good there. Uh, Vincent Venuccio, you heard what uh, Lizzie was just reporting there, the National Education Association, Correct. huge, uh, basically it's a teacher's union, uh, forecasting 300,000 fewer members. I put it to you again, Vincent, that's a catastrophe for government unions. Well, I tell you, if, bad, if the unions are not representing their members, if they're not taking their needs and wants into account, then, yeah, bad unions will see precipitous drop-off. Now, if they are taking the, the needs of their public employees and their members into account, that... That drop may not be as precipitous, but, you know, what we've seen is we've seen unions pushing the envelope and harassing their members to stay in. So in mm. that case, yeah, you know, unions like the teachers' unions, unions like AFSCME, which is predicting a 30 percent drop in its membership, they may have some issues. Vincent Venuccio, thank you for being with us on an important day. Appreciate it.